<sighs> right, where's the... <clears throat> you know what, I don't have a coaster, so I'm just going to put it on the ground. Alright. This is roll A, take one. Where do we begin? That is a very good question. Kia ora, my name is Antonio. I am a third year uh, creative media production student at Coca Massey, uh, Wellington. I'm in my final year. And pretty much for uh, our third year major project, we're making a TV pilot episode called Smoke and Mirrors. Smoke and Mirrors is a contemporary mystery pilot episode that follows four college students. A brother, a secret lover, a friend, and a class acquaintance. Unfamiliar with one another, each individual is unexpectedly sent mysterious notes regarding the disappearance of their fellow peer, Mia Baxter. This isn't just another spontaneous getaway. I mean, this is your sister we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it, but... A week. That isn't like her. I mean, who just runs off on the night of their 21st birthday? She'll come back. She always does. Diverse representation in Smoke and Mirrors was important to the story and characters that we see on our screen. Where we wanted to include gender diversity, sexual orientation, and race to create an authentic story from our experiences. So what do we mean by this diverse representation? And in this case, for Smoke and Mirrors. Well, the idea that representation has, whether it be film, TV, game, or any kind of media, is the ability to shape ideologies for its validation and praise, such as status, race, gender, and so on. But there's also the potential for producing such hegemonic views, creating discourse upon the other, which is an area within mainstream media that is perpetuated over the decades, especially when a culture has dominance over the other. Take for example D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation, a film praising the rise and heroic actions of the KKK. The film at the time was a box office hit and America's first feature length film created in Hollywood in 1915. And here I quote, the film was America's first feature length motion picture and a box office smash. And during its unprecedented three hours, Griffith popularized countless filmmaking techniques that remain central to the art today, end quote. Director and filmmaker Spike Lee responds to D.W. Griffith's film, stating that it brought a resurface of the clan. Lee says that the film was shown in Woodrow Wilson's 28th US President's White House, and he said that it looked like writing history with lightning. So directly, that film, because of its resurgence of the clan, it led to black people being murdered, lynched, and castrated. That was not taught. End quote. In Otero, New Zealand, diverse representation was more open at the time than it was like in the States. In 1914, New Zealand's first feature film, Hina Moe, directed by George Ta, was aimed to educate New Zealanders about the famous Māori legend Hina Moe and Tunatakai. And I quote, The story goes that Hina Moe braved the midnight waters of the Lake Rotorua and incurred her family's wrath to claim her heart's desire, Tunatakai. The love child of a chief's wife, and therefore not Hinamoa's social equal, he was in an inappropriate match, but she wanted him, and she got him. In comparison to America's The Birth of a Nation, New Zealand's first feature was made to benefit biculturalism in New Zealand, especially our relationship with Te Kana Māori. From a hundred years ago, the New Zealand film industry has been in constant light with diverse representation especially with its support from the New Zealand government when the NZFC was founded in 1978 after Roger Donaldson's film Sleeping Dogs was created. And I quote, The NZFC is committed to supporting improved representation from all New Zealand's diverse communities to express their unique voices, stories and cultures so all New Zealanders have the opportunity to see themselves and their experiences on screen. End quote. From what New Zealand has done to promote its film industry, 
is so far a positive turnaround, especially when it comes to representation. In our major project, the dynamic and chemistry through our characters was a great way to be inclusive of representation. However, as we critically analyze the characters, the story, and the perception of the pilot episode, we begin to see the potential flaws within stereotypical constructs through unconscious bias, misrepresentations, and or generalizations that should be thought out and considered during early development and pre-production. One of our characters, Carmen Ramirez, was originally going to be played by a Filipino actor, as this character is of Filipino descent. However, due to production difficulties and implications such as budget, time restraints, and actor's performance, our director made the choice of casting an actor of different ethnicity, not Filipino. But it still satisfies how this character will play out. Here, this shows a concept of misrepresentation at a more minimal level, where certainties were out of production control and therefore reasonable due to these constraints. But here, it shows an example of wherein down the future of representation that these should be applied and considered if we were on a much higher production, like commercial, etc. In addition, this raises questions around cultural appropriation and the boundaries around the authenticity of our story. Actually, let's go back a few months where uh, I was pretty uncertain about what to do. At the beginning of the year, I was kind of feeling, you know, not that confident in knowing what to achieve. I, you know, I was, I was actually thinking about either doing, you know, producing or being a DP because I really like those kinds of things, the organization and helping people kind of like, you know, achieve their uh, creative vision. I was not so fond of, I guess, the the di directorial work or the the screenwriting or any of that kind of stuff because at that point you know I didn't really have any you know ideas to really you know go on to further develop I didn't know where I was going to go in terms of 3D major project it was the last week and as I went into a, a video and sound production workshop sat down and I was talking to uh, Fiona pretty much said to her you know I was looking for a project and I wanted to be a DOP luckily thankfully gratefully she said actually hang on we need a DOP because our DOP just dropped out you know uh, a few days later I uh, go and meet the uh, I guess the initial team just the uh, director producer and I think uh, the editor um, at good old Tussock everyone's favorite coffee shop hands down and pretty much I met uh, Bailey and so she went into detail about you know her vision for I guess you know the story and you know I definitely resonate well with you know her her creative vision um, because it included four different uh, perspectives of, of the story. Bailey's you know story uh, was written into Smoke and Mirrors as a uh, semi-autobiographical concept. Uh, same thing with uh, Cherry pitched in and Ben and Fiona so you know you've got that and created um, I guess different perspectives of uh, people you know uh, people's personal life so that I definitely you know was like oh this is this is actually pretty cool just wanted to say a big thanks to uh, everyone who's worked on this film I thank the producer especially for her hard work making sure that you know everyone is on track and is the director onwards and upwards people and um, you know the future of filmmaking is definitely becoming more diverse and that is something that we've got to appreciate just seeing everyone's story on screen really so looking forward to the future